So I wanted to talk about Miss Marvel. I know, I have not talked about a Marvel Studios series in quite some time. I liked Hawkeye, I liked What If, I liked Moon Knight. But now after watching Miss Marvel, I'm like, you know what I can do is after the entire show is done, just kind of give you my general feels about the show as a whole. If you want me to do that with Moon Knight and Hawkeye, uh, give this video a like and I'll know. <laughs> Maybe I get, I don't know, 2,000 likes or something. I don't know, just, just like it, make me feel good. Your clicks are my satisfaction. This talk will probably start off a little spoiler free, but we will definitely get into spoilers over time discussing this. We gotta talk about a couple spoilers in this. I also wanted to talk about Ms. Marvel because I really enjoyed this show. I knew there was a lot of like, what's this show gonna be about when it was first being announced? Especially when we noticed in the trailer some changes of origin, some changes in powers. And also because let's just be real, People being a lot harder on Marvel as of late. Some of it justified, some of it not. Some of it justified, a lot of it not. In my opinion, it is still very entertaining, even with some flaws here and there. I'm just enjoying what we're getting in movies and series, instead of wondering what the entire Phase 4 or the entire MCU is going to be. It takes time to build. It took time to build the first time. Even though I'm not a hardcore comic guy, because I grew up reading Archie and Casper the Friendly Ghost and Richie Rich, who I think is... Casper the Friendly Ghost. I have always known the main characters, your main Marvel characters, your main DC characters. We're getting a lot of characters in these movies and series that I'm not that familiar with. But Miss Marvel, I knew a little bit about because I played Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on Nintendo Switch and I played the story mode of the Avengers video game and that story was all about Miss Marvel. I love the fact that she is a superhero who is also a fangirl of superheroes. Everything from seeing them as celebrities to writing fan fiction and doing drawings about them. Like, it's just so cool to see that aspect. It's a very meta thing because obviously there are people who are legit fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, fans of the Marvel characters who do the types of things that Kamala Khan does as a fangirl in the Marvel comics, who also knows the Avengers in the Marvel world. Okay. My head just went, whoa. So that's why, of course, I was interested in seeing what a Marvel series would be about this character. In the series, we meet Kamala Khan. She's a 16-year-old Pakistani girl from Jersey City, and she is a superhero fangirl. She loves the Avengers. She wants to go to AvengerCon, which looked really awesome in the show, by the way. She listens to Ant-Man's podcast, which needs to be a real thing. She is all about superheroes to the point where other people are telling her, especially her family, her guidance counselor, even some of her peers, that she's living too much in the family fantasy superhero world and needs to deal with reality. She can't even pass a driving test. But when she gets hold of a magical bangle bracelet that her great grandmother once wore and that her grandmother passed down to her, when she puts that on, it awakens something in her and she has superpowers. She can make digital visual effects <laughs> crystals show up everywhere. She's a crystal gem. She's here to save the day. And she has these night light powers that allow her to make all these different platforms, shields, projectiles, even just always with this crystal-like look. She even can put the crystals around her body to make larger versions of her body, like large versions of her hands. Now this is obviously different from the comics and the video games where she literally stretches her hands and her body and makes them bigger, kind of like Mr. Fantastic. Of course, everyone had their thoughts about it, but I thought it was something that worked in the series, especially in episode two when her best friend Bruno, which what is the deal with Disney and Bruno's? Bruno, who's her science Wiz, best guy friend who also secretly has a crush on her and also gets jealous when she meets other guys in this series because she meets a lot of guys in this series. He does some analyzation on her and is like, yeah, we thought that the power was coming from the bangle bracelet, but it might actually be something inside of you. And that bangle was just the catalyst to something that was already inside your body to give you those powers. And there's more to that, which we will talk about later in the video. I gotta save that for later. Oh, 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 oh! A portion of this video is sponsored by Fan Home. Fan Home is a pop culture subscription service that sends you unique collections and build up models from your favorite franchises in movies, TV, and gaming. Fan Home has partnered with Marvel and Marvel Studios. So with Fan Home, you can build your very own Iron Man Mark III armor that looks just like what we saw in the movie. Each month in the mail, you will receive a package with a new part of the Iron Man Mark III armor to put together. So unlike Tony Stark, you're not gonna have to build it in a cave with a bunch of scraps. Iron Man, and check this out. Lights up, oh that's so cool, <laughs> I built this.
I built this helmet. Each month you get a new package with a new part to put together. And by the end of it all, you're gonna have a limited edition Iron Man Mark III armor figure, fully posable, 24 inches tall, 52 points of articulation, LED lights on the mask, the boots, the hands, the reactor. It's made of metal and high quality plastic. It even has flaps so you can open up on the shoulders and the legs, just like Iron Man. In addition to the monthly parts to build, you'll also get these great exclusive mini magazines. And the magazines have instructions so you know exactly what to do step by step. Plus other cool items like shirts, backpacks, hats, power banks, even posters will show up in future boxes as well. Hey, Iron Man, how's it going? And Fan Home has other officially licensed packages as well, including Star Wars, Naruto, Street Fighter, even Fast and Furious. Fan Home is family. Click the link in the description to sign up for Fan Home and use my promo code to get started with a discount. Thank you, Fan Home, so much for sponsoring my channel. Click the link in the description to sign up for Fan Home today. Iman Vellani, who plays Miss Marvel, is Miss Marvel. Like, if you see any interviews of her, she is legit Miss Marvel. She is a hardcore fangirl. That actress really loves Marvel, and you can tell not only in her interviews, but also on this show. And that's a lot of what makes this series work, is the fact that this is a superhero who wants to be a superhero. Look, I have no problem with superhero dramas, but after seeing so many movies and shows of, oh, I'm a superhero, but I feel so bad about it. It's so hard, and I don't even know if I want these powers. It's just nice to see someone being like, I'm a superhero, let's go! So I watched all six episodes on Disney+, Plus, but I actually got to go to a special event where they showed two episodes on the big screen with a crowd as sort of a special event premiere. And this was amazing because it was obviously the cast and crew were there, obviously people with the background of the characters in the show, representation on the forefront in this screening. And man, this crowd was so wild. There were so many things in the series that the crowd was just cheering so much. You could just see and feel the happiness that people felt in that room, being able to see a Pakistani superhero, a Muslim superhero, a South Asian superhero on the big screen. And not only were there cheers for seeing Ms. Marvel, from seeing Kamala Khan to seeing all the different cast members, but it was also interesting to hear the screams and applause for certain things. Like there's a really special part in the second episode with Nakia where she talks about how she's always tried to fit. It was that, you know, too white for ethnic, too ethnic for white type of feeling and why she wears her head wrap and everything and just like the, the applause and the cheers and the even sniffles that you heard in the crowd. I thought that was really cool. It's just so cool to see this show do that because that's something that I love about this show and any other show or movie that does this. Something that everyone can relate to in some way. It's a origin story, it's a human story that we can all relate to, but it has no problems deep diving into the culture and representation and diversity that it has behind it. It's obviously the same way I felt about Black Panther. Like everyone can watch Black Panther, but it's those elements, <laughs> those parts of Black Panther where you're like, Mm, that's good stuff right there. I hope the sequel can do the same. But yeah, having no problems going hard on the culture yet still making it relatable for everybody and also being sure that if there's something about the culture that you feel like other people aren't going to recognize, being able to present that in a way it's like, oh, okay, thank you for that. I mean, we get a good history lesson in this series. <laughs> Episode five starts off with like, let me teach you something you probably didn't learn in school. But we all can relate to having overbearing parents, I think. Like, I think that's something that can go across many cultures. I definitely felt that. I am a kid of the get in the house before the street lights come on. Also trying to fit in in your school. Also understanding the community that you're in and the people in that community. Community plays a really big part in this series. You get to see all these different people in the community, in the family, how they interact with each other and how they might bump heads from time to time, but at the same time are also always there for each other, care about each other as family. And that definitely culminates in the sixth episode where you literally see family members in the community working together to protect Ms. Marvel. Kind of in the same way if you ever played Spider-Man Miles Morales, they have like a moment like that as well as like, this is our Spider-Man. Plus you got the Illuminatis, which I mean, can I, <laughs> can I meet them? I'm all about the Illuminatis, man. I love the family dynamic, especially because it just felt so realistic and authentic. This felt like a real family with real interaction. And it was also cool to see the family's growth throughout the series. It wasn't just about learning about Kamala and how her growth is as being a superhero. We also got to meet her parents and her brother and he's going through his marriage to really just show you how this family is changing and growing. The arc of Kamala and her mother is 
very strong in this because at the beginning, she's mean. She's overbearing. She's like, you don't get to do anything you want to do because I said so. Especially when it came to the Avengers stuff because she was like, you're getting too much into fantasy. She also didn't like some of the outfits the Avengers wore and didn't want her daughter wearing that. Like, it was a lot of different stuff there to show that she doesn't really understand or is connected with her daughter the way that she used to. She tried to make Kamala a Hulk costume and even had Kamala's dad dress up as a Hulk as well. Ooh, ooh, but when Kamala talked back, I was like, oh, you ain't going to AvengerCon. Like the moment she said that looks stupid, I was like, girl, you grounded forever. <laughs> like, I don't even know why you thought you could say that. So to see the progression from that, not wanting her to dress like a superhero or making a costume that she didn't want to be in, to then go to the last episode where she is so proud and is accepting of her daughter being a superhero and even making her the iconic Miss Marvel costume. I was just like, ooh, that costume, that costume is fire. That is a really cool costume. And her dad just really caring for her. And that one scene they had in the last episode where he talks about how they were wanting to have another child and didn't know what was gonna happen. And then they had her and named her to mean perfect and then showing that the origins of her name also means Marvel. It was just like so good. And then he actually gives her the name of our little Ms. Marvel. So the mom gives Kamala the outfit, the dad gives Kamala the name. Oh, so good. Look, I love the action, boom, boom, bang, bang, pow, pow. But like it's those moments that then makes you appreciate even more when all the action stuff and the superhero stuff come into play. You gotta have that human emotion. You know, as we have discussed about other Marvel projects, it's great to have that action, it's great to have that comedy, but with that human side, when you get to see that human emotional side to it, it makes you more invested in it when all these things happen. And I feel like Ms. Marvel did that really well. And of course, I also love that grandma was like, let me tell you, Kamala, your mom was a bit of a rebel too. <laughs> and then we also got to see the dynamic of the mother and the grandmother, and of course, the great grandmother who has all these rumors about her throughout the family and was almost kind of shunned from her family to then realizing that she was part of the reason why they're all still here. All that wrapped up in a great origin story for Kamala Khan becoming a superhero. Kind of the same vein as Spider-Man, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. Hell, I'll even say static shock. Just seeing the steps of someone getting new powers and wanting to be a superhero, but now having to learn what it means to be a superhero as a person, that's always interesting to watch. We especially get that in the second episode when she has to try to save I'm sorry, the dumbest kid in the world. Like this kid goes up on the top platform, leading out of a window of a building, all the way up high trying to get a selfie. It's like, look dude, I'm kind of bringing this on yourself. But luckily Miss Marvel was there to partially save him. He still broke a leg because <laughs> she messed up a little bit, but could have been worse. I love that whole action sequence that happened after the wedding scene, the whole living on a prayer <laughs> scene. There's a lot of talk about Bon Jovi in this series, but yeah, having this action sequence and having living on a prayer play under it, that was really cool. And my favorite part, they're in the kitchen and they're fighting. There's one woman that was just like, nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> Was that a short Jordan Peele shout out? And I really like the visual elements that they did with this. Not only just the powers that Kamala has, but then there's also these other visual elements that play into her daydreaming fantasy state that I really like that stuff as well. We get some straight up like Saved by the Bell era dream sequences, you know? Like remember Saved by the Bell when they would have like the little, little purple line around the screen, like it's a dream sequence. But there's also like these little animations and things that will pop up when she's thinking about things or like text messages that they send that they actually put into to the environment. So some of her thoughts might end up becoming wall graffiti. Some of the text messages might actually show up as neon signs in the background in a store or something like that. I just thought that kind of stuff was really neat. They do a little bit less of that as the show progresses, but I hope they don't lose that entirely. I would love for that to be a constant part of Ms. Marvel content, even if you see her show up in the Marvels or any other movies, because I feel like that is a unique style that works great for Ms. Marvel. And as I said before, it was just so neat to see how they handled the culture and the history in this. When you see the wedding scene in episode three, or you see them travel to Karachi in episode four, and especially episode five, where we get the history of their family, actual time travel of Kamala going back to that time, and learning about partition, which I didn't know that much about until I watched the show and how it affected people. And just like, it's a, it's a big part of history and it's a sad part of history. And it was interesting to see the show not only try to explain that era to people who may not be aware of it, but also through the characters show the emotions that they feel throughout many generations having to either experience it or hear about it or deal with it within their family. Like this is one of those things that like really split up families. Especially when we get the backstory of Kamala's great grandmother, Aisha, who 
I'm just gonna say it, that woman is fine. <laughs> that farmer was like, hey, what's going on? She threw a dagger at a dude. She was all like, don't mess with me. And he was immediately like, look, look, whatever you need, I'm gonna help you out. He did not hesitate to help her out. I feel you, man. My farm is your farm. She was awesome, man. It was great to see that backstory, especially to find out that she was part of the clandestines who people think are Jin, but they're actually the clandestines who are from another dimension and they're trying to use Kabbalah's bangle to get back to their dimension, but getting back to their dimension may actually destroy our dimension. And then she also finds out that the guy that she likes, a new guy at school named Kamran, also happens to be a clandestine and he wants to help Kabbalah because he kind of likes Kabbalah, but he also is a part of the family and his mom is like the one that's leading the clandestines and they're messing everything up and he don't like that. So she like leaves him behind. But then when they try to open up a portal and get back, it like makes them deteriorate. But then Kamran gets powers that are kind of like Ms. Marvel's powers, but he doesn't know how to control them. And so then that leads to a bunch of problems to a point where Kamala has to call back to Karachi to talk to Red Dagger, who is this guy that she met there that was part of this group of the Red Daggers and he kind of likes her. And when Kamala went back in time for partition, she was the one that helped Sana, her grandmother, out as a kid to get back to her family after Aisha was stabbed. Get all that. And then there's the Department of Damage Control. We get that dude back from Spider-Man No Way Home that was questioning Peter Parker and his friends. And then he gets this new lady. She is giving me some major Jason from Stranger Things season four vibes. She's all like, no, I'm just doing my job. I'm like, yeah, but the things that you're saying and the ways that you're doing your job, I'm getting some offensive microaggressions. I'm getting some racist undertones with what you're doing under the guise of it's my job. But I'm just gonna keep, you know, messing with this same group of folks every single time while doing my job. I'm just saying. You know, Peter Parker, they just brought that dude in. Kamala Khan, they were shooting on sight. I'm just saying. I mean, it got so bad where even Kamala's white friends, they were like, look, you helped her. We gonna treat you the same way. Cause seriously, they were using like the freaking Stark tech that they stole from Mysterio. And they even pulled out the old Incredible Hulk like pulse thing that knocked him down. They were using it against Ms. Marvel. You're using the same weapon that you use on the Incredible Hulk on Ms. Marvel and you telling me there ain't no undertones to that? Damage control soldiers attacking Kamala and her friends in their high school. But that's okay because Kamala's friends went to the Kevin McAllister School of Attacking Bad Guys and they pull some Home Alone pranks on them. Eventually they just see Kamran and they go back to the bases, just shoot the dude. So then Ms. Marvel had to come out and put the shield up. She does a thing in episode six, put that hand down and begin! And she goes full stay puffed on them, just like gets up, long arms, long legs, just crashing things, jumping up in the air, slam, dun dun it. Oh, so good. After credit scene, Kamala's just chilling out, her bangle starts flashing, she's like, what's going on? Then we get a little and then all of a sudden, Captain Marvel is in Ms. Marvel's bedroom. Where'd she come from with that cool haircut and that new suit? And at first glance, it might look like that Kamala turned into Carol because that's a little bit of a reference to something that actually happened in the comic book. But looking at it close, they swapped places. And that kind of makes sense because in an earlier episode through a flashback, we see them doing like an archeological dig, the clandestines, and they see a blue hand which we can assume to be a Kree hand. So it's very possible that this bangle might have some Kree backstory to it, which could lead to some powers of switching back and forth if you're on like the right energy link. So that might be what happened is that Kamala and Carol switch places somehow. So now Carol's on earth in Kamala's room. Kamala might be somewhere in space. I guess we'll find out in the Marvels, which comes out like what, a year from now? Dang. Plus homegirl from WandaVision is gonna be in it too. Oh man, I can't wait for that movie. Oh, also when the 10 rings, in that, in that uh, dig, didn't they like do a shot from above and it had the 10 rings on the ground? And the series even confirmed at the end, Miss Marvel will return in the Marvels. Had that on screen. So yeah, I think that's it about Miss Marvel. Oh yeah, there might be one other thing that Miss Marvel did that I think is worth mentioning. Kamala, there's something different in your genes. Like, like a mutation. So in the episode two, Bruno was like, hey, Kamala, this thing, this power that you have, it ain't all about this bracelet. I think there's something else going on in you. And then in episode six, he called it out. He was like, yeah, I checked your genes. Your genes are a little different from everybody else. Some might say a mutation, complete with the play in the background. What? What? <laughs> I screamed so loud. I was like, no, they didn't. 
Kevin Feige was like, nah, you think you ain't gonna watch this Miss Marvel? You don't think she important? She gonna bring the mutants to you. How? Can we get an A-man from the congregation? Can we get an X-man from the congregation? Come on now. Yeah, dude, they just straight up, just out of nowhere, drop mutation. Oh. Oh! This is not only amazing for Kamala in the MCU to possibly be a mutant, but now we can look back at everybody we've met so far and say, okay, she might not be the only one. If they're saying that this bangle was a catalyst to unlock her mutant powers, who else may have mutant powers or may have already had their mutant powers unlocked? I love the idea that mutants could just already be around. And especially in this phase of Marvel where we're seeing gods in this MCU, we're seeing celestials in the MCU, we're seeing more aliens in the MCU. When you start mixing a lot of that with some humans, not to mention whatever else might be going on, hell, we still might have Terrigen Mist out there. We don't know. With all that mixing up, yeah, that means some people ain't gonna be the same as other people. Yeah, the mutations are happening. And I love that she even points out like, oh, that's just gonna be another label. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is! Mutants! <laughs> this is why I love this stuff. It's like, you gotta watch it for the meat. Like, the story that you're here to see is the meat. But when they give you that dessert, <laughs> you don't expect the dessert all the time. Some people want to just be stuffed on the dessert. No, no. You gotta enjoy the meal. But then when that meal drops that dessert, you're like, God dang, that pound cake is good! That is a chocolate cake and ice cream of pure goodness of mutants right there. <laughs> yeah, man, I really enjoy this series. While I always appreciate when the MCU gives us the cameos or the world building or the universe building or whatever, that's always great. But it's just always nice to just see a nice origin story that just gives us a person getting powers, learning what to do with their powers, learning how to become a hero, and I feel like when you can do a story like that, but then also make it unique by adding the elements of your characters, your theme, and in particularly in this case, your culture and diversity and representation, it just makes that a very interesting thing to watch. And that's what I really enjoyed about watching this show. Look, I've been loving all the Marvel series. I had a great time with WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and I cannot wait for She-Hulk. <laughs> But yeah, man, I just want to give respect to this series because it was the one I will say that I was like, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to enjoy this, but I'm just not thinking that much about it. I didn't put a lot of investment into it. I was just like, this is a show I'm going to watch in between the other projects. And I'll just sit back and be like, all right, this was cool. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh man, this is deeper than I expected. And this is even more important in the realm of the MCU in general than I was expecting. So good job. I knew Ms. Marvel was going to somehow connect itself to going into the Marvels, but now, <laughs> this ain't just about the Marvels, this is about the MCU as a whole, when you drop that M word. <laughs> they said the M word. There hasn't been any talks about a season two, but I really hope that Ms. Marvel gets a season two. Obviously, I want to see her in the movies, I want to see her in the MCU, but I feel like there's a lot you can do with this character that a second season would be really cool, especially when you get to see her now finally being a superhero, going all in on saving the day. Thank you so much for watching. This was a lot more fun for me to talk about it this way. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and Sam Wilson is Captain America.